What is up, everybody? Little car chat time. Um, this one is about mindsets. And you guys know, I mean, I'm working with people on mindset stuff every day. That's my full-time job, training, nutrition, mindset, and biohacking, right? And so because I have kind of this inside loop and I'm seeing all these patterns with people over and over and over, I can only assume that a lot of people are having similar things going on. And I just, I got to talk about this one piece and mindset that is so bad right now. It is so bad and it causes so many problems. And I know you guys have heard about self-talk. I know it's like, but are you practicing healthy self-talk habits? Because this is, this is how I see it. My question, I guess for you is when you do something that you are not proud of, let's say you made a goal and you didn't achieve it. Let's say you're trying to lose weight and you just ate a bunch of crap. Let's say you were trying to get to the gym seven days a week this week and you only did one. Let's say you said something rude to somebody. What is your self-talk after that moment? That is my question because what I see is tons of self-abuse, shaming, guilt, what's wrong with you, what, you You always say that, you always do this, you're never gonna blah, 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 all this stuff. And the reason this is so important, I don't know if you guys, if any of you maybe chime in if you have, if you have read David R. Hawkins' book, he's a PhD researcher, he is so awesome, he has a book called, he has many books, I love his um, uh, Letting Go, The Pathway to Surrender, but the book I'm talking about for this is called um, Power Versus Force. Holy crap, this book is so interesting. And so what he's talking about in this book is, I think he calls it his scale of consciousness. And he's, they, they tested people's muscle strength based off the emotion that they were in. So you have the top ones are like enlightenment, joy, peace, love. And guess what the lowest two vibrational frequencies are? Shame and guilt. So here's how I see this cycle feeds itself because what do you do? You do something where you screw up and you weren't perfect and you did something that you wished you wouldn't have done. And so what do you do? You push yourself into the lowest vibrational frequency as you push yourself there. Not anybody else. You do it to yourself. We do it to ourselves. So, oh, freak man. I can't believe you keep doing that. Ugh. And guess what kind of choices you're going to make when you're in the lowest energy possible? Low vibe choices. And so it feeds itself and feeds itself. And I, for me, I would say self-talk is one of the biggest plagues of humanity right now. Negative self-talk, self-abuse, self-abandonment. Like just, it, we were raised in a society, I think globally, it's not only accepted, it's like encouraged to be hard on yourself. That makes you a self-aware person if you screw up and you make fun of yourself in front of everybody or you tell everybody, oh, I can't believe I did that. I'm so stupid. I can't, oh, oh. <laughs> we feel safe with you now because we do that to ourselves too. It's encouraged. It's like makes you a self-aware person and it's bullshit. It's so unhealthy. It's so toxic because then you're walking around with this low self-esteem. You esteem yourself low. And it's, to me, like in nutrition, this is the thing that keeps people stuck in these like horrible eating patterns where they like try to starve themselves or like be perfect and then they can't because they're freaking humans and their expectation, their idea of what's perfect is completely irrational and illogical. And then so that when they don't meet this impossible expectation, they, they've been trying to control so much that they just, can't handle all this control anymore. They lose, you know, I can't restrict myself like this anymore. I'm going to eat all the things I was restricting. And now we go into the self-loathing and the self-hate and all this stuff. And now your energy is lower. And so now you're making all these low vibe choices and it's just a cycle. It's just toxic. It just goes on and on and on. And I have seen this more times than I can count. I would say, because pretty much no one's going to hire me unless they've tried to change their body on their own. Right? So I would say I see this almost I mean, I want to say every time, but I'm like, I may, might be forgetting someone, but pretty much every single person I work with does this. So I know if you're listening to this and you've tried to lose weight or build muscle or change your body in some way, you've been there. And so what's the solution to this? Self-compassion. There's a book called Self-Compassion by Kristen Neff. And I, when the first time I started really talking to about this to my clients and hire one of my clients. She's still one of my clients. I love you girl. She challenged me on this. She's like, mm -mm. I, like, so I'm going to go eat a bunch of crap and then I'm just going to be nice to myself about it. I'm just going to keep doing it. And that is the lie. 
that is that is what keeps us that fear if I let go of all this insane amount of control that I have then I'll end up this 500 pound blob on a couch with Dorito crumbs all over my chest that's what we think is gonna happen it's not what happens when you are compassionate to yourself you are able to find solutions so I say shame and guilt is a cop-out because if I can just be like oh man you screwed up oh, you suck that's it that's the end of the road that's all the problem solving that's all the thinking I'm gonna do about that thing but if I switch that into girl that's okay what happened there what was that hmm now we can get into solutions focus now we can we can start marveling at it we can extract ourselves out like a third party I mean like that's interesting and we can start finding patterns hmm I've noticed every time I hang out with people I get really nervous and I eat a bunch of crap after hmm Am I afraid to eat like in front of other people? Hmm, I wonder where that came from. Oh shit, I couldn't eat all I wanted at home growing up. Now we can start getting into solutions and figuring out what's actually going on with us. But if we just cop out and are just like, you suck, you never do or whatever. You just, you, you, that's the end of the road. You're in the lowest vibrational frequency and when you're in that energy, you're not a solutions focused, empowered person. And so the first step, in my opinion, to changing this negative self-talk is switching it and I love Dr. Um, Amen's little acronym called Killing Ants, Killing Automatic ad automatic Negative Thoughts. So when these come up, it's going to come up again. You know, I just had a call with a client the other day, and I'm like, you're going to do it again. You're, <laughs> you know that, right? Like, so it's coming. Just let you know. You're not going to be like, perfect now that you signed up for coaching. It's going to happen again. So when it does, when you, you know, make a choice that you weren't proud of, where does your mind go after? So when that stuff comes up of like, why are you doing this? I can't believe you will mm, kill it. Like you're squashing an ant, step on it. Nope, 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 nope. We are not going there today, not today, right? And switch it into, I wonder why I am doing this. Hmm, well, I am pretty sleep deprived. Oh, I, I mean, I've been really restrictive in my mind around food, so, huh. Um, gosh, I didn't really eat very much protein today. Hmm, gosh, I got so nervous at that thing I went to. Maybe I'm just kind of like trying to boost my mood. Why am I so nervous when I go to that? Why am I nervous when I hang out with those people? What's the self-limiting thought there, right? So go and kill the ants, go into self-compassion. It's okay. You're human. You're going to do all sorts of crazy shit. It's never going to end. We're always going to be, we are very complex beings. That's for sure. And so lean into compassion and start to marvel and ask the questions. I wonder why, I wonder why I'm doing that. Why am I doing that? You know, and that's where the juice comes. That's, and that's beautiful. And this is why I love meditation because it trains you to be able to extract yourself and look at yourself from a third party point of view. So anyway, self-talk. The next step in self-talk is flipping, flipping. So for example, let's say you went to do your workout and you didn't feel like you did that great of a job in your workout. You half-assed it and you could have done better and all these things. So right then, and when your mind starts to creep in, like, dude, you're not even trying. Yeah. All, and we use these as motivators, right? A lot of us have been, we have trained ourselves to use negative self-talk as a motivational driver. So we're afraid to let it go because again, we're afraid that we will now become these like completely undriven losers that never do anything. That is not what's going to happen. You are going to become empowered. And when you're in that empowered, self-loving state, you're like, I can do freaking anything. <laughs> it's the opposite is what happens. The name of the book that I referenced was David R. Hawkins book called Power Versus Force. Heads up if you read it, if you listen on Audible, which I listen to all my books on Audible, it's really dry. <laughs> I'm like, homie, you should have hired someone to read this book. He's a scientist, not a Audible reader. But that's how I that's how I did it, and it was fascinating. Okay. Um, so again, now like the flipping of your mind. So like instead of being like dude, you suck. You could have pushed harder than that. You're being lazy and all this stuff that we use to drive ourselves. It's like, dude, good for you freaking getting in here when you're tired. Good for you. That's how, that is how I started switching my self-talk is proactively saying kind things to myself. So I get out of the gym literally out loud. I tell, I use this in my coaching all the time. I'm like, talk out loud to yourself. Do it. Be a crazy person. Talk out loud to yourself. And I'd get in my car and I'd be like, good job, girlfriend. Freaking killed it right? And it's this positive reinforcement. And guess what? When you start giving that to yourself all the time, you don't need it from other people all the time. So if you find yourself one of those people that 
needs your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your kids or whoever to tell you like you're doing such a good job all the time it's probably because you're not doing that for yourself so your cup is empty and you have a need and guess who can fill that best you all the time anytime you want right now you can be like dude good for me for I don't know listening to Tara ramble on Instagram and but I'm like I'm thinking about that I'm gonna start I'm gonna start killing ads I'm gonna start pushing myself to be kinder more compassionate you know so just this when we fill our own cups with our own positive self-talk and compassion oh we become such less needy people we become so fulfilled we're so good in ourselves and it's a constant practice you know it'll bite you in the ass in little air in surprise areas where you didn't know you were insecure that happens to me all the time I'm like mm, yep got some insecurity there and I'm like I have to do that same work all over again that I've done in other areas where I'm like dude you're doing a great freaking job you're doing a good job you're working on it keep going keep going girl you know and just talking to yourself positively like that goes miles miles so anyway, just sharing this because it is, it's a plague. It is a plague of negative self-talk out there. It's self-abuse. It is. If you're sitting there, think about the things. This is one exercise I do with my clients that is like very illuminating for them. And it's, I, I ask them like, think of something recently that you weren't proud of that you did. Think of something recently that you've been like hard on yourself about because you think you should be doing and you're not doing. You know, what do you, what do you believe about yourself? when you, what does it mean about you that you did that? What does it mean about you that you didn't do that, right? And so they write all this stuff down and then I have them pick like their child or somebody that they like just love, like the sweetest person ever, like a just little earth angel. And I'm like, okay, so now they did that and you're gonna tell them out loud, go ahead, turn your mics off. You're gonna tell them that they are lazy, loser, you know, fat, whatever the freaking nasty stuff is. Which I'm like, would you, and you can just see their faces, they're like, but that's what we do to ourselves it's abusive if we were to talk to other people out loud like we do in our minds when we're being hard on ourselves we would be abusive assholes so why is that okay to be abusive assholes to ourselves it's not okay it's not okay and so a lot of us have to do deep deep work on flipping this and it comes in the moment integration of any new practice it's over and over and over every time it's like oh, I can't believe you you're always late instead of that hmm why am I, why do I keep running late for stuff? What can I switch? It's okay. It's okay. You know, compassion. But why is that going on? See how we get into solutions mindset when we start with compassion. If I just go into, you're always freaking late. That's it. There's no solutions. There's no, no progress. No growth happens after that. So it's lazy. It is being, being so mean to ourselves. It's just a dead end road, you know? So we can, we can, if we can be kind, if we can start with kindness, we can get to solutions. We can raise our vibe. And when your vibe is raised, you make decisions out of a high vibe energy instead of a low vibe one. Okay. That's my little mindset car chat for tonight. Thank you for those of you who join me. I'm getting ready to go to a nice little dinner with a bunch of awesome people. That's why I have real clothes on. <laughs> All right. Thanks guys for joining me. Have a great night. Bye.